Hi, Josh Biggie here from Criterion Barrels. We're about to go over part two of the Accurizing the AR-15 video series, which is going to detail some of the build components that you'll need to Accurize your AR-15. Um, what we have here is my uh, kind of SPR Recce hybrid rifle um, that I have set up as a, primarily a prone gun, uh, but there are a number of components on here that I would highly recommend if you're looking to Accurize your AR-15. So the first part we're going to go over here are, is one of the three major components that is required to accurize a rifle, and that is a uh, floated handguard. And uh, the one I have here is an uh, ADM uh, low light rail. Uh, really the uh, principle you're running behind is something that isn't touching any of the components that's attached to the barrel, has a nice tight lockup uh, with a little bit of clearance between the handguard and the receiver as well. Um, the second major component involved in accurizing the AR-15 is the trigger. And what I have on here is a Geisley SSAE, which is a two-stage match trigger that really helps uh, interface with the rifle, gives you nice trigger control, helps dial those groups in quite a bit more than, say, a mil-spec trigger. There are a lot of other brands out there that you could explore. Um, this is just the one that I selected for this particular build. The third and final component essential to AR-15 accuracy is the rifle barrel, which we are intimately familiar with here at Criterion Barrels. With this particular build, we use the 1516S-HY8-N, and that is a 16-inch mid-length uh, salt bath nitrided barrel. Um, each one is hand-lapped and held to very stringent quality control measures. Um, we can go into a little bit more detail about how everything fits together here in the next video of this series. Um, but we'll also bring out the, uh, let's see, the gas blocks here, make mention of those. There are two different styles of gas block that you'll typically run into. There is the set screw style, like we have here. Um, that's what we're going to be using on this particular rifle, uh, which was manufactured by American Defense Manufacturing. And then there is the clamp style gas block that we have here from JP Enterprises. Uh, this one's actually an adjustable gas block, the other one is fixed, which gives you a little added flexibility if you're running a suppressor or um, different loads, you're trying to tailor the recoil impulse. Uh, you can do that with an adjustable gas block as well. Uh, we're not using the JP on this particular build because it doesn't fit very well underneath the handguard. It doesn't really give you enough room to, to float it effectively. Uh, so we'll be saving that one for a different project but a lot of people will like the clamp-on style gas blocks for a more uniform tension around the circumference of the, uh, the gas block journal here. Outside of that, uh, we have a Magpul PRS stock that is really set up for uh, running a rear bag very nicely with a flat bottom on it. Um, there are a number of other stock options out there. Some people like the collapsible stocks. Really the goal is to have something that is sturdy and doesn't move around a lot on you. Um, as far as internal components go, we have uh, kind of mating the upper and lower together an Aki wedge. Uh, some lower receivers like uh, the MGS Citizen uh, AR-15 lower will have a set screw that can lock the upper and lower together quite well. I believe uh, Midwest Industries, their 308 ARs and, and uh, possibly some of their AR-15 lowers incorporate that feature as well. Uh, a lot of people will use mated uppers and lowers that have tight lockup without those components. Um, this one in particular is kind of a mix master. I believe the bottom is, uh, lower receiver is from Spikes Tactical. Uh, I'm not sure, quite sure where I picked up the upper, but it, they're both forged, uh, kind of a standard mill spec configuration. Uh, some people do prefer the billet sets uh, with a little added strength there. Um, my most accurate AR-15 I own is uh, American Defense Manufacturing uh, Universal Improved Carbine, their Mod 2 variant. Um, which I've had in uh, past videos with the um, Cold Hammer Forge vs. Criterion uh, comparison video. As far as the optics go, uh, right on here now I have a Vortex Viper PST 624. Um, previously I was running a Vortex Viper 2.5 to 10 uh, PST on there. I switched from the first focal plane to the second focal plane as the second focal plane reticle tends to be a little bit thinner uh, at its uh, maximum magnification level. Uh, really gives me the ability to zoom in on a smaller target, hold small, miss small kind of principle. Um, so generally for the uh, little bug hole group type shooting, I'll stick with a second focal plane scope. Uh, if I'm shooting like a bench rest or F-class match, generally second focal plane is preferred whereas a first focal plane uh, will be preferred for field applications or um, 
places where I don't know exactly what range I'm firing from, uh, it'll give me a nice sub-tension to work with at all magnification levels. Keeps everything nice and consistent. Um, as far as that goes, uh, we've got a uh, Harris bipod on here right now. I believe this is the SBRM model, so it gives you a little bit of adjustability on the cant of the rifle back and forth if you're on an uneven surface. Uh, bipods, you can be quite accurate with them with some training. I am not a world-class bipod shooter. You won't see me cleaning up an FTR anytime soon. Uh, but there are some shooters who are capable of remarkable groups with a bipod. I am not one of them. I can usually hold sub-minute with a bipod, but when it comes to half-minute or under consistency, I'm just not able to attain that. Um, so my solution to that is uh, a bag rider attachment that you can pick up from Sinclair or Brownells that uh, attaches right to the Picatinny rail section or the M-Lock section on your AR-15. So it mounts right underneath there and then I can ride that on my uh, Sinclair bench rest attachment. Um, so a neat little tool, um, especially if you're working on low development or you're shooting off a front rest, uh, picking up one of these will really help tighten up groups and it takes a little bit of the human element out of any error you'll run into. So we use that generally for a lot of our accuracy testing. Um, as far as other components go, uh, a solid mount. Uh, I would recommend this. This one in particular is an ADM recon mount, but there are, uh, if you prefer fixed rings or a different QD method, uh, you just want to make sure you have a nice tight lock up there. Um, sometimes if you are seeing groups open up, it may be the, the optic or the mount that is at fault. We have found that on occasion, um, but uh, swapping out the optic with another is a good way to troubleshoot that. One way to reduce horizontal dispersion is to add a bubble level. This particular model mounts on a Picatinny rail segment, although other models exist that mount directly to the optics. Um, so as far as other components go, uh, charging handle, I have a mil-spec you know, standard charging handle down here right now. Um, probably later in the evening I'll swap that out with a, a BCM gunfighter or something of the like. Um, bolt carrier group, as we had mentioned in part one, headspace is essential. Um, outside of that, I mean, Mil-spec bolt carrier groups are capable of, of very good accuracy and function. Uh, there are some options out there with different finishes, say nitrided or some sort of coating like a nickel boron that may clean a little bit easier. But as far as uh, accuracy goes, it's all about maintaining that headspace spec. Um, so outside of that, I mean, we've got a muzzle device on there to help dampen recoil impulse a little bit, get us on target a little quicker. Um, but really the sky's the limit on that front as far as what personal preference uh, leans towards. So I think that's about it. I mean, we do have some other components in here that we'll detail during our next video, which is actually building the upper receiver and accurizing it with uh, um, the assembly process. Um, so I'll have that probably up and running later this week when we take a look at that and uh, go through the process of, of assembling the rifle. This concludes part two of our Accurizing the AR-15 video series. Until next time, good luck and happy hunting.